the way we model a system when trying to control it is to start with what's called the plant. What we would call a system in control theory is often called the plant. And uh, as you may recall, the plant essentially translates some input to some output. And we always denote the input as u and the output is y. Now, in addition to the controlled input, we can also have a disturbance. This is an additional input that we can't control. And it's typically modeled as being an additive input. So we have an addition of the u and the w to give you the y. So that's the plant when it's an open loop. But in fact, when you control something, we don't uh, run it open loop. We often, we almost always have a feedback system. And so the feedback starts with this. So we have a reference input r. That's what's called the set point. That's what we want the output to look like. And what we do is we measure the output that was actually received, uh, that was actually uh, obtained, which is y. And unfortunately, the measurement process is going to not measure y, but there may be an error. So if you're actually going to measure is h, uh, which is the measurement process, and that gives back the feedback over here, which is so we comes back over here, and we compare the feedback value with the reference value, and that gives us the error E. And what the controller does is to take the error and use that to control the input. So uh, it may sound a bit complicated, but it's easy to work it out. So we want the output Y to be equal to R, and so we measure Y, and we get a, something back which is uh, uh, actually not necessarily the right thing, but uh, we compare this to the set point, and if there's an error, we change the input again. So imagine that you have a home heating system, and you want the output to be 25 degrees. So we want the output to be 25 degrees, and that's the, uh, that's the room that you're in. And the room has a heater, and that's a heater that we can control. So here's the heater, H and the heater controls the room. And what we can do is we can turn the heater, let's say, on and off. That's our control input. Now, in addition to the heater, we have the possibility of the room's temperature being affected by a door or a window, let's say a door opening. And that would be the uncontrolled input W. And the output value that we actually see is Y. Now, what we see, 25 degrees is the reference set point R. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure Y. So we're going to measure the temperature. So let me just move this away for a moment. So uh, the Y is the output. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure this output using some measurement process. And this fed back value is going to be coming to the, to the uh, sorry, this fed back value will be coming to the input. And we are going to compare this output with the reference value. So the ref r equals 25. So we're going to compare these two together. And the error, which is the difference between the two, is going to be what's going to be given to the, uh, con to the controller, which then controls the output. So let me uh, adjust that over here. So we're going to put in over here the controller. The controller c then chooses the u so that the room temperature is maintained. So let's say that the temperature goes up, somebody opens the door and the temperature goes up to, it goes down to 20 degrees. When the temperature goes down to 20 degrees, you will measure this and say, oh, there's a five degree difference, degree difference. So the error is going to be five degrees. And the controller sitting over here says, oh, I'd better turn on the heater. And when they turn on the heater, then the room will uh, warm up eventually and despite the door being open, we'll bring the temperature back up to 25 degrees again. On the other hand, if the temperature drops, goes up to let's say 27 degrees, then the controller is going to turn off the heater, and of course, the room is going to hopefully dissipate heat, uh, and the temperature will drop down. So, if you were to look at the uh, time and the temperature value, we'd like to see something like this. So, this is 25 degrees, which is our reference. And let's say we were at 25 and the door opened, that would be a sharp transition down. And then the controller was going to respond after a while, it's going to kick in, and hopefully it recovers like so. 
And so this is this the time from here to here is sort of the response time. Now note that while the controller is responding, the system is actually not in equilibrium. So in this period of time, the system is actually not at 25 degrees, it's below 25 degrees. And that's pretty normal for a control system. We can never completely maintain control. What we instead can do is to keep this as, uh, as low as possible. Now, of course, there are other possibilities. Uh, for example, you could have a system which looks like this. So let me draw another system, another controller. And here's a controller which says, you know, I'm going to respond right away to the temperature change. So the temperature is like this. And then when it drops down, instead of taking its time to come up, it immediately turns up the control and overshoots and it undershoots. And we can have this sort of situation as well where the temperature oscillates between warm and cold. And uh, this is on average the right value. Obviously, you know, on average, we are at 25. But this is like saying if you take alternate hot and cold showers, on average, you have the right temperature. So you know, if you have scalding hot and freezing cold, uh, it's not a very nice experience to have. So this choice between this system, which responds very quickly, and this system, which takes more time, but nice and smoothly responds to it, is often the trade-off between responsiveness and stability. So these kinds of systems are called responsive systems. And it often happens that when we try to make this delay small compared to this value here, the responsive system becomes unstable. And so what we'd like ideally is to have a system that's both responsive and stable, but it turns out, and we'll study this mathematically in a bit, that this is actually not possible. So uh, this other point to note is that the, we, we expect this measurement over here, and sorry, this measurement over here, but you compare to the reference to be perfect. Uh, if you have an error in the measurement process, then we sort of out of luck. So if the output is actually 26 degrees, but the measurement says it's 25 degrees, then the error is going to be zero, and the controller thinks life is good. So the so it means you must always buy the best sensor possible or install the best possible sensors. We shouldn't skimp on sensors because a sensor error is essentially something that you cannot uh, compensate for uh, in any reasonable way. Okay, uh, given this background, let's look at a, a specific example of a computer system which is going to be uh, controlled. And so we'll go back to the web server. So we have the web server over here. And the web server, we are going to look at it from a closed loop control perspective. So it has some, uh, some client requests coming in. And these client requests come into the web server and then they get served. Okay, so that would be the open loop or uncontrolled case. But let's say that the web server has some metrics such as the the, the mean, uh, it's the delay, the the request re the response delay. And this delay we'd like it to be, let's say, less than 100 milliseconds. So if the uh, what we'd like to therefore do is we need to measure the actual delay. So we need a measurement process that says, OK, I'm going to measure the delay experience. How do we do that? Well, we tag the client request with the time that it entered, and we tag it when it is served. And the difference between the two is the measurement. So we measure the delay. And what we do is that if this delay exceeds 100 milliseconds, then we know that we cannot, uh, we're not meeting the the the, the required target. So what we need to do is turn down the client request. So we need to assume that there is a way to control the client request. We can send them a message saying, look, uh, you're going too fast, slow down. So we need to have a controller here. And so here is the reference value, which is 100 milliseconds. And the controller is assumed to be able to control the client request to ask it to slow down. And now this becomes what's called a feedback control system. Um, the, uh, we need to make sure that the uh, controller is, uh, we need to make sure the controller is able to 
control the client requests. And also we need to take into account that when the controller tells the clients to do something, it may take a while for them to respond. So what we really need is to have a buffer of requests and the response delay then becomes tied to the, the size of the buffer, how occupied it is, the occupancy of the buffer, or maybe I should say occupancy and not size. And so what we can do then is to essentially link the control actions to the measurement of the occupancy rather than the response delay. Occupancy is easier to measure. And you'll see that whenever the occupancy exceeds a certain value, then the controller is going to ask the client to slow down. And we'll come back to this web sub example repeatedly, but the general principle is that we assume that the controller can somehow reduce the volume of client requests and that what you care about is the occupancy because that relates to the response delay.